Hello and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be adding some crosshairs to the game. So, um, uh, S S1, E31, commit 1, committed everything from last episode, and then at the start of this episode, I'm adding some crosshair, um, some crosshair textures that I've used for previous projects. So if you want to get those, go ahead and just find this commit and download them. So I added crosshairs, commit, sync. And so now to find those, you can go into your assets folder, imported crosshairs. And there's a few different types. I've got sort of a cross. Um, like that. There's a... Oh, I didn't actually input the rocket ones, but then there's three dots and an X. And so we can just play, play around and see which ones we like the best. And now I'm going to create a second canvas, and this will be devoted just to the crosshairs. UI, canvas. I want this to be screen space overlay. Um, I'm not sure what Pixel Perfect does, but I'm just going to go ahead and check that. And now I want to add my sprites. I'm just I'm just going to try one of these. I think I'll just do the 9-1. Uh, and they have to import as sprites. So, so to change that, you can click on the image, go into the inspector, and then change texture type to sprite. Apply that. And then just drag that onto the canvas. And I can't see it. So I'll go back into the scene view. And for some reason it, it's on like the very bottom left of the screen. So we just we need that to be centered. Alright. Canvas. So now it's in the center, it's just really, really tiny. Scale that up. There we go. And I'm not sure why it's not showing up in the game view. It should just be there. Um, I'm, I'm worried that it has something to do with the fact that we created a second canvas. So I'm just going to drag this back onto the first canvas. And it's still broken. So what could be the problem here? It's definitely on the front. Um, let's see what happens if we have them both open. It's still centered, it's just not showing up. So I'm going to pause the video and look into that. Alright, so I think the reason for that is because it's trying to use this sprite renderer. So I'll go ahead and delete what we just imported. Right click on the canvas and import UI image. So now, now there's actually something showing up. And we can just drag 9.1 onto that source image. And there you go. Um, it looks like, it, I mean, right off the bat, you can tell it's, it's too large. So just reduce the size on that. And to reset our windows, we can go into Layout, Default, Play. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. I like it. You'll notice that the bullets aren't exactly going where the radicals pointed. Um, that's okay for now, we can fix that later. All right, so now we have a reticle, and we probably want it to like flare up when the enemy, like when we actually hit an enemy. Uh, what's the easiest way to do that? I think I'll create a separate script. I'll put it in the character folder, and we're just going to call this reticle controller. 
I want this to be easily referenced by other um, game objects, so I'm going to give it a singleton reference to itself. So to do that, you do public, static, reticle, controller. So we're, we're creating a public variable of type reticle controller, and we're just going to name it instance. So now if somebody wants access to this class, um, this variable is going to point back to itself. So uh, instance equals this. And now, like usually, if you're trying to access another script, you would have to like find the game job, game object and use a git component method. But since there's only ever one reticle manager, we can access it by saying reticle controller dot instance dot, and then we can do whatever we want to it. So let's go ahead and make sure we put the reticle controller on the scene. I'm going to put it on top of the player. Radical controller. And within that, let's create a public method called hit. Public void hit. And just, just to make sure it works, we're just going to print hit to the console. Like that. And within enemy health, Every time they take damage, we'll just broadcast a message back to the reticle controller. So we could do it in damage, or we could do it on collision enter. Um, I'll just put it here. So as, as soon as the bullet hits the enemy, um, notify reticle controller. Like that. All right, and you can see it's it's already putting the message hit to the console. Now, um, let's go ahead and change the reticle. When the when we hit the enemy, just to signal to the player that that they landed a successful hit on the enemy, so we need a reference to the the radical image. So I'm going to call this image underscore radical. Save the scene, and we have a public image. And by default, um, it's not seeing the the image type. So let's go to Unity Documentation Image. And it says it's in the namespace Unity Engine.ui. So we need to import that library. Using Unity Engine.ui and now image automatically shows up. It's, it displays a sprite for the UI system. So we have a variable called reticle image of type image. And it's, and it's public, so it'll show up in the inspector. Go back to FPS controller. Now you can see we have this public field. And we're just going to drag, drag image reticle onto that. Save the scene. And now let's create a sprite field. Um, default sprite. Actually, um, in the future, I might want to change the sprite based on what gun the player is holding. So I'm going to call this default gun sprite and public sprite hit gun sprite. Or we could make it more specific. We could call it rifle. Yeah, why don't we call it rifle default and rifle hit. So whenever we hit the enemy, change reticle image dot... What is that called? Um, reticle image... Source image. Reticle image dot source image...
We'll do, okay, main texture. Or a sprite. I, I think we probably want to use sprite. So vertical image dot sprite equals rifle default. Actually, that that would be rifle hit. And then we're going to want to set it back to the rifle default. So we can use a timer for that. Public float um, hit timer. No, we'll, I'll call it reset interval. Equals 0.5f. That's way too long. 0.1f. And private float reset timer. Or cooldown. I, I typically try to use the word cooldown across all my timer variables just to keep things consistent. So update if time.time .time is greater than reset cooldown. We're going to set it back to the default image. Radical image dot sprite equals rifle default. And then when we hit the enemy, we set it to rifle hit. And let's just update this timer. Reset cooldown equals time dot time plus uh, reset interval. Go back into play mode. And for some reason, we lost our, our sprite. So that's not good. And I'm guessing that's because... Oh, yeah. So rifle default and rifle hit have not been assigned yet. So that would be in imported crosshairs. I'm going to use the X. And we'll use 9.1 for default and 9.3 for hit. Okay. And now you can see it changes as we hit the enemy. We can reload. And I think I'll use a separate reticle for reloading. Or we could just hide the reticle altogether. Why don't we do that? Um, so public void reload. Public void finish reload. No. Yeah, why don't we do that? Public void start reload and finish reload. So now we have two, diff two different functions that the weapon can call to start the reload and finish the reload. I'll create a public boolean called reloading. And by default, that'll be false. When we start reloading, reloading equals true. And when we finish reloading, reloading equals false. Now, in the update, when we try to reset the sprite to rifle default, if reloading equals true, we'll do something. Otherwise, if we're not reloading, we'll just set it back to the default image. Now, if reloading equals true, I'm just going to hide the reticle completely. Reticle dot image, reticle image dot Let's see, what would be the best way to hide the image completely? If we remove the sprite, it's just going to be a white square, which we don't want. I'm going to open up the documentation for the image. 
Oh, and I already have it open. Now let's see. Functions. We can set native size, calculate, input. Oh, enabled. That's what we want. Um, actually, maybe we don't want that. We could use material and just set the alpha to zero. I'm just going to try with enabled. It, vertical image dot enabled equals false, and then otherwise set it to true. Vertical image dot enabled equals true. Let's see what that does. Reloading. The image is still there. Oh, well, we never actually called the start reload function. So we, we want to do that from basic gun. Um, when we start reloading, vertical controller, whoops, vertical controller dot instance dot start reloading, save. And when we finish reloading here, we can just call radical controller dot instance dot finish reload save let's see what that does aha it worked so while we're reloading you can't shoot and the radical disappears until we finish reloading Awesome. Okay, uh, this video ran kind of long. Sorry about that, guys. In the next video, um, I'm gonna work on centering the bullets so that because before they they kind of shoot forward from the gun, but that's not necessarily aligned with the center of the image on the screen. So we're gonna make sure they shoot toward the center of the screen.